right, this is Paul's prayer to the saints. He's, he's praying. He's telling them they need to persevere through some things, need to be strong and rooted in love. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height stay back stay there for a second there are greater places wider places deeper places longer places higher places in God that we have not accessed yet 19 to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled say filled with all the fullness say fullness of God now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us that power works in you there is a place beyond yourself there is a place in God beyond yourself. Paul was praying, and he was telling them you have to persevere. He was telling them, you left me. He was telling them you have to persevere. He was telling them there is more for you in me. He was telling them there are places higher and deeper and wider for you in God. He was telling them there's a fullness in me that you haven't accessed yet. There's more. This was a prayer. We quote this portion of scripture without giving the entirety of the thought. Lift your hands. Say there's more. This is corporately prophetic and this is also individually provoking tonight there's more there is a place beyond God beyond yourself beyond everything you have experienced in God for you but you need to want it you need to desire it you need to go after it you need to seek him for it Hebrews 6 1 he goes on to to teach Jewish members of the church at the time to keep their faith. And in this portion, he's telling them, I need to give you some meat. I need you to be more mature. I don't want to give you milk all the time. And he says this, he says, therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on. Say that with me. Say, let us go on. Let us go on. There is more in this hour for this church. There is another door of revival that we are to walk through in this hour for this church. I need your cooperation before I preach, all right? I need to make sure you believe some things with me before I bring this message through prophetically. All right, these truths, I need you to make sure that I'm convinced that you believe them with me. So I'm gonna share a couple things with you. I need to make sure that faith and agreement are in the room. First, I need to know if you believe that we have not exhausted God's blessing supply. I need to know with some fervency that you know that, that you have not exhausted God's blessing supply. There's more in God for you. He has not run out of blessing. It's absolutely fundamental to this message that I understand and am convinced that the majority of people under the sound of my voice agree with me in this matter. We have not exhausted God's blessing supply. Do you believe with me here tonight? The second thing I need to know, if you believe that God has not run out of Holy Ghost fire, I need to make sure you know that God has not run out of Holy Ghost. I need to make sure you know and agree with me on the fact that many people in Africa might have got baptized with the Holy Ghost. Many people at these altars might have got baptized with the Holy Ghost in fire. I don't think we've counted all of them, but there's still fire left. There's fire left there's still Holy Ghost left I need to make sure that
that you believe this with me because his fire doesn't go out. One nation rejects it, another nation hungers for it, so God sends it, but I'm not letting the fire leave America. We're gonna see it in hospitals, we're gonna see it in high schools, we're gonna see it in parks, we're gonna see it in our room. Come on, you should praise him. You should praise him for that there is no use in me preaching this message until somebody convinces me that you believe there is more Holy Ghost and fire for you. He's got as much to give as he did before the 120 got it. He's got as much to give as he did before the 3,000 got it. He's got as much to give as he did before the 5,000 got it. He's not running out of Holy Ghost and fire. got something for you tonight if you want it if you want it it's an endless supply believe me I've gone to my prayer closet over and over and over again I've said light me up because I can't do this without your fire next I really need to make sure you believe with me that God is not bankrupt I need to make sure you believe this with me because where God's taking this church I need to make sure some people in this house are in agreement and in faith with me that God's not bankrupt he's gonna raise up some people in this church I don't care how much money's in your bank account right now he's gonna raise up some people in this hour he just needs some vessels willing to be faithful to a tithe willing to give a little above that an offering as the Lord leads and then those windows I said those windows are pouring out blessing beyond anything you can imagine why because the hour is desperate the need is great souls hang in the balance the year of the open door is the double door blessing for this house there is a double door blessing for this house God told me hidden riches in secret places he's uncovering them wealth of the wicked stored up for the righteous he's bringing them into the laps of his children for such a time as this so that we can reach more people so that we can do more for him so where's it coming from it's coming from the source the God that owns the cattle on a thousand hills. The God who has all the gold in the world. He has streets paved with it. He's not even close to being bankrupt. Come on, do you believe this with me? I need agreement. I need agreement. You might think there's no way a little old church like this in Whittier, California can fund crusades that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, but God's doing it through some faithful people, and this is the year of the open door. There's more, there's more, there's more. There's more. There's more where this is coming from. There's more. There's more. Come on. He's not bankrupt. He has everything. You need breakthrough in your finances. Reach out and lay hold of your source tonight. I need you to believe with me that we have not experienced our greatest service yet. We have not experienced our greatest service yet. I know. I know some of you are thinking, but I got filled with the Holy Ghost at this altar. I know some of you are thinking about that prophetic word came across. I know some of you are thinking about when Pastor Brian preached that message one more time and revival broke loose. But I'm telling you, we haven't experienced our greatest service yet. Do you believe it with me? Do you believe it with me? There are new realms ahead of us. There are new lands ahead of us. There are new atmospheres ahead of us. There are new experiences ahead of us. Whatever God has done for you, whatever he has blessed you with, whatever God has given you, there is more where that came from. Can I get some agreement in the room? Now, I absolutely cannot preach this message tonight until I know the people I'm preaching to believe that there is yet another door of revival to walk through, another realm of revival to break into, another outpouring of his spirit to receive, another deluge of glory to drown in another baptism of fire to ignite you, another wave of his presence to propel you into the fullness 
of God. The source has not run dry. The reviver has never stopped reviving. The healer has never stopped healing. The deliverer has never stopped delivering. The savior has never stopped saving. The provider has never stopped providing the source. Come on, the source has not run dry. I need faith in the room. I need faith in the room. He's as big as he ever was. He's as great as he ever was. There's more, there's more, there's more, there's more, there's more. There's beyond where we are right now in God. Think of the greatest blessing you have ever received. Think of the greatest Holy Ghost move you have ever experienced. Think of your greatest financial miracle. Think of the greatest service you were ever in. Think of the greatest personal revival you have ever experienced. Now look them in the eye tonight. Look them in the eye tonight and tell them there is more where that came from. There's more. There's more. City Reach Church, think of every crusade we've done. Think of every service where the power of God has poured out every soul that's been saved, every miracle that has happened. There is more. Somebody shout it in faith. Shout it in faith. Say, there's more. There's more. There's more. There's more. Tonight, I need to get a word prophetically through the atmosphere. And the word is simple, beyond. Say beyond. Beyond. It's a simple word, really, but it's a word that holds the essence of all this Bible teaches me about my God. Because when you read the Bible, this book about God, it doesn't take long to recognize that he's a God who is forever forward moving. He's a God of progression. I don't see him going back at any point. I don't see him turning around. I don't see him giving up. I don't see him getting stagnant. I don't see him getting complacent. He's a God that is forever moving forward. No retreat, no surrender. There's no turning back. And as the remnant church of Jesus Christ, we must go beyond ourselves. We must go beyond our needs and we must enter into a place of intercession for God's agenda, for God's purposes, and for God's glory to break into this lost and broken world. This is not the hour for casual praying. This is not the hour for casual Christian living. This message is a reminder of the spirit of the New Testament, a reminder to pull you into a place of power, into a place of blessing in God, a place beyond yourself to go beyond, to go beyond, to go beyond everything you've ever known in God, to go beyond your flesh, to go beyond who you think you are, what you think you're able to go, what you think you're able to do, where you think you're able to go. This is a message to take you beyond yourself. This is a message to align you with the heart of God, with the spirit of God in this hour. This is what the spirit of God is calling for from the church in the hour in which we are living. This is the beckoning. This is the call of the spirit. It's a desire of the Holy Ghost to create and cultivate in the hearts of men and women and in the hearts of our young people a passion, a passion, a passion to go beyond, a passion to go beyond. I hope somebody hears me tonight. I hope somebody hears what I'm trying to tell you tonight because the Holy Ghost is provoking in our hearts a passion to go beyond ourselves in this hour, a passion to go beyond normal, casual experiences in God. Business as usual is not good enough. Religion and tradition will not get the job done. It's a call from the Holy Ghost to go beyond. I hear him calling. I hear him calling. Do you know the power that resides on the inside of you? Do you know how many Christians walk around defeated? There is a power on the inside of you from another world. If you'd stir it up tonight, if you'd let the fire of God rekindle those embers and the Holy Spirit breathe on what's inside of you, you could go beyond where you are. Right now, 
now there's got to be somebody other than me under the sound of my voice that wants to go to spiritual heights I've never visited. There's got to be somebody in this place that wants to experience services like we've never had. There has to be somebody in this place that wants to experience a revival in Los Angeles like we've never experienced before. Go beyond to go beyond, to go beyond. And we won't get there with a casual one-two. We won't get there coming in here on empty and leaving half full. We won't get there with a let's just get this service over with attitude. We won't get there just because we wave a preacher down. There must be a burning, flaming, red hot passion in our hearts to reach out and lay hold of all God has for us. Richie, Angelina, come. There's a passion that drives people to do things they wouldn't naturally do in God. There's a passion like these two have that pulled them, uprooted them out of everything comfortable and made them reach beyond themselves to lay hold of what God has for them. Come on, pray for them. God, I pray a grafting in in the Holy Ghost. I pray, God, I thank you, Jesus, that in you there's family, that in you there's acceptance, that in you there's wholeness, that in you there's a unity that flows in the Holy Ghost. And I cover them now, God, and I say in the mighty name of Jesus, hey, your shirt even says it, beyond blessed. Come on, come on. Come on, you didn't even know you were prophetic tonight. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for a couple of people that were willing to step out on nothing and believe God for everything. And I pray now, God, an oil to flow down from Aaron's beard, God. An oil to flow down from Aaron's beard, God. Graft them in, Jesus. Graft them in, Jesus, for your purposes and for your glory, God. Spirit's beckoning his church for us to go beyond, for us to move beyond what we're comfortable with, for us to go beyond what we think we're called to do, for us to go beyond what we want to do, for us to go beyond preference, for us to go beyond tradition, for us to move beyond everything we think church should look like. If tradition is good enough for you, I apologize in advance for offending you tonight. If just going along for the ride is good enough for you, I hope the Holy Ghost gets you and shakes you tonight. If the old wineskin of status quo Christianity is good enough for you, please forgive me as I destroy the old wineskin and attempt, even if it takes me my entire life, to sow a new wineskin sealed in the Holy Ghost and suitable for what God is pouring out in this generation because the Spirit of God is calling. He's looking for somebody. He's looking for somebody that has a passion to go to new heights in him. We haven't had our best service. We haven't had our greatest revival. We haven't had our best crusade. We haven't had our greatest move of the Holy Ghost. We haven't experienced our deepest place in the glory. We haven't won enough souls. We haven't reached enough children. We haven't changed this city. We haven't gone into enough of the highways and the byways. We haven't fed enough hungry mouths. We haven't clothed enough naked people. We haven't done all God has for us to do yet. When Moses led God's people through the wilderness beyond Egyptian bondage, he was criticized. The people complained. But he heard something from a fire. He heard something from the fire. His call was birthed in the fire. He heard God say, I am sending you to bring my people out. So he wouldn't settle for halfway. God's purposes became Moses' purposes, and he had to go beyond. 
when Joshua and Caleb got eyes on that promised land beyond the wilderness, that land inhabited by giants and enemies, but it was promised to them. Joshua and Caleb had faith that reached beyond time and it secured their destinies. Caleb said, let us go up at once and take possession for we are well able to overcome it. I declare over this church tonight, let us go up at once. Let us go up at once. Every land you've called for us to take, every nation you've called for us to lay our feet on, every soul you've called for us to reach God, let us go up at once. We'll cut the heads off giants. We'll do whatever we gotta do let us go up let us go up let us go up let us go beyond where we are right now we want to go farther in you than we've ever gone it was the burning passion and faith in the hearts of Joshua and Caleb that caused them to reach beyond that fear-filled faithless generation and lay hold of all God had promised when a teenage girl found herself face to face with an angel and the knowledge of a ruined reputation, having the very son of God in her womb, thanks be to God that she had a passion in her heart to go beyond herself. She was willing. The word of God tells us, let it be, ah, let it be to me according to your word. He just needs some willing people. He just needs some willing people. When Jesus, was in a garden called Gethsemane under a Passover moon. He prayed for me and he prayed for you. Can you see it? He's getting ready to face the cross and he's praying. Not like we pray. God give us traveling mercies or bless this food. He's praying. He's draped over a stone altar he's crying out to his father if it be your will let this cup pass from me i'm in agony but don't let me die here because i have to make it beyond this place i have to make it to the cross i have to finish the work for which i came and i'm telling you under the sound of my voice there are places in god that you have not made it to yet and this is a call from the holy ghost to go beyond and he died on a bloody cross, was buried in a borrowed tomb, but he even went beyond that tomb. He went a little lower. He took captivity captive. He went beyond death and he conquered it. He went beyond the grave and he rose again on that third day. The disciples went beyond casual Christianity and they became true witnesses. Paul went beyond blind religion and had his spiritual eyes cracked open. Peter went beyond cowardice and became the preaching prophet of Pentecost, the 120, went beyond God dwelling with them in the person of Jesus Christ. They waited for the promise of the Father and God dwelt in them through the Holy Spirit and fire. Come on. All of them came against resistance. All of them came against criticism. All of them encountered persecution, but thanks be to God that there was a passion in their hearts to go beyond. There's gotta be somebody under the sound of my voice and there's something on the inside of you. You wanna go beyond every limitation that you have right now? They wondered, what's over there for me? What's over there for me? I gotta see it. I've gotta experience it. It's to be taken and I've gotta take it. It's to be had and I've gotta have it. God didn't create it just to stay there and be unoccupied and unpossessed. God put it there for us and we're going after it. I said, we're going after it. Don't settle. Don't settle. Please understand I am in no way trivializing everything that got us to this place. We will never forget the wonders. We'll never forget everything and everybody, every prayer and every seed sown. We'll never forget all God did, but there's more beyond this place. Allow me to insert right now that many people trip up when they make a distinction between God's ability and God's willingness. For most people, it's easier to say God can do it than God wants to do it. I'm telling you, God wants to do it. That miracle you're believing for, God wants to do it. That revival that's gonna shake this city, God wants to do it. That ministry you're called to, God wants to do it. 
Not only can he, he wants to. He wants to. Come on, say he wants to. He wants to. He wants to. He doesn't just dangle things in front of us and say, I can do it, but I'm not going to do it. That is not the God I serve. He can and he wants to. He can and he wants to. Come on. There are devils crying out that you don't get this tonight. There are devils crying out that are hoping you don't get the revelation of this tonight. God's new year just started, the year of open doors. I want you to think about what you're believing for in God. Think about it right now. Shut your eyes for a minute. Think about it right now. Think about it right now. I want you to think about everything you're believing for. I want you to think about all you need from God in this very moment, every miracle that hasn't come to pass yet. I want you to think about it right now. Now open your eyes, look at your neighbor, say, God wants to do it for me. God wants to do it for me. Come on, I need agreement. The faith is rising in this place. Say, God wants to do it for me. Tell them, say, this is my miracle year. God wants to. God wants to shake off doubt, shake off unbelief tonight. Say, God wants to. He wants to do it. And I rebuke every lying spirit that is telling you that he doesn't. I declare in the name of Jesus, City Reach Church, God wants to pour out his spirit in a greater measure than we have ever experienced. He wants to send a revival so deep and so wide to this land that it shakes this city. He wants to uncover riches stored in secret places because we put it all on the field for souls. He wants to bring an increase to this church. He wants to give us nations. He wants to open doors for this gospel to be preached. He wants to take us beyond where we are right now. Not only can he, he wants to. It's for you. It's for you. This promise is for you. There's a call in the spirit. There is a beckoning in the Holy Ghost. Come up here. Come up here. Come beyond where you are right now. Come up here. Walk through the door. Push beyond where you are in God right now. I know. I know it's unfamiliar. I know you haven't seen this place before. I know there are experiences you've never had before in God, but he's beckoning us to go beyond where we are right now. Come on. Somebody's got to get it. Somebody's got to get it. Somebody's got to refuse to stay right here. Somebody's got to refuse to settle for anything less than the fullness of God. There is a breaking out spirit in this place. That was prophetic. Some people have been confined too long. Some of you have settled without fire for too long. Some of you have settled with chains and shackles for too long. But it's time for you to break out. That's why you're here. And the Holy Ghost is saying to you tonight, go beyond. Go beyond. Go beyond where you are right now. Let me quickly, quickly bring this through. The call of Abraham. All right, stay with me. This is, this is good. The call of Abraham. I always thought, in fact, I was taught that the call of Abraham began with Genesis 12, 1 through 4. Get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I'll make you a great nation. I'll bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I'll bless those who bless you. I'll curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him, and Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Genesis 12, 1 through 4, I was always taught that the call of Abraham began here. Let me help you. Genesis 11:31. I discovered this portion of scripture. In Terah, Abraham's father took his son Abram and his grandson Lot, the son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abram's wife, and they went out with them from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan, and they came to Haran and dwelt there. So the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. Terah, Abraham's fa father, either he got the call to come out, of the Ur of Chaldeans, or he bought into Abram's call. Either way, he assumed the primary place of responsibility for leaving Ur of Chaldeans. We give that credit to Abraham, yes? 
We give that credit to Abraham, but actually it was Terah, Abraham's father, that led the expedition out of the land of Chaldeans. Makes me wonder if Terah would have done everything God wanted him to. It makes me wonder if Terah would have become the friend of God or if Terah would have become the father of the faith because verse 31 says that he dwelt in Haran. He never made it. This was a little over halfway to the promised land. He only went about halfway to where God was telling him to go. That's as far as Terah went. Here's the parallel for us in the church. You see, in the church, most of our celebration is about the coming out. And listen, that's something to celebrate. I celebrate when people come out of sin. I celebrate when people come out of drug addiction. I celebrate when people come out of alcoholism. I celebrate when people come out of adultery. I celebrate when people come out of cold, dead religion. That is something to celebrate. But God didn't make Terah the father of the faith because he came out. God didn't call Terah his friend because he came out. You see, coming out wasn't enough for God. I'll tell you what captured the heart of God. Do you want to know what captured the heart of God? Do you want to know what captured the favor of God? It was a man that said, I want to experience everything God's got for me. And I'm not stopping halfway. I'm not going part of the way. Don't get in my way. Don't try to stop me. Don't try to quench my fire. Don't throw a, a wet blanket of religion on me. I'm not just going halfway. I'm going all the way. I'm getting everything God has for me. I'm not going to be stopped. I'm not going to be slowed down. When Abraham stepped into his beyond, there was something on the inside of him that said, I have got to go where I have never gone before. Church, let's go somewhere we've never gone before. Let's see some things we've never seen before. Let's experience some things we've never experienced before in God. Heights, depths, widths, lengths in God's presence that we have never accessed before. Let's pray like we've never prayed before. Let's seek like we've never sought before. Let's thirst like we've never thirsted before. Let's hunger like we've never hungered before. There is a call in the spirit. This thing is going to be bigger, more grand, and more glorious than you can think or imagine. It's going to sweep through this church, into our homes, into our city, into the nations, not because of us, but because of the goodness and the sovereignty of God and some intercessors and some burning ones, some violent revivalists that aren't willing to settle with halfway, that will do whatever it takes, fast as long as we need to, pray as long as we need to, sacrifice as much as we need to, so as much as we need to, to get all God has for us so we can go beyond. There's a move of God that's about to happen in this church. Do you agree with me? Do you believe it with me? There's some people listening. You just needed a moment like this to have your faith nudged just a little bit so you could step out of the boat. Listen, listen, listen. There's more. There is a place beyond this place, and we are not going to settle. Elijah had a lot of chances to stop in his journey with Elijah. Stand with me to your feet for a minute if you're not already standing. Elisha had a lot of places in his journey that he could have stopped. He wouldn't stop at Gilgal. He wouldn't stop at Bethel. And he wouldn't stop at Jericho. He wouldn't even stop at the Jordan River. He said, Elijah, I'll be your shadow. If you're going, I'm going. You know what the Holy Ghost is looking for in this generation? He's looking for some Elishas that will remember all the wonders and the miracles that will honor all God has done in the past, but they will look God in the eye and cry out, what I need is a double portion. I want to go beyond. I want to experience more. I want to go beyond. I want an anointing. I want oil. I want to go beyond myself, beyond my limitations. I want an anointing to see limbs grow back. I want an anointing to see the dead raised. I want an anointing 
that will shake a land with revival that the devil can't stop and that politicians have to recognize. I want to go beyond. I want to go beyond. Church, we got to go beyond where we are right here. We got to go beyond where we are in God right here. Is there anybody? Is there anybody in this tabernacle that wants to go beyond? Grab somebody's hand next to you. Grab somebody's hand. Begin to pray. I know we're getting out of our comfort zone. Grab somebody's hand. Begin to pray. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. We're going to break through. We're going to break through. We're going to go beyond. Come on, pray. Pray. Revival like we have never seen. Holy Ghost outpouring like we have never seen. Miracles, signs, and wonders like we have never seen. A harvest of souls like we have never seen. The demonstration of God's power in your life like you have never seen. Provision like you have never seen. Access like you have never seen. Open doors like you have never seen. More, more, more. There's more. There's more. It's burning in your spirit eternity burns on the inside of you more joy more peace more provision more power of the Holy Ghost more oil more healing more peace more faith I wonder if we can have a prayer meeting like we've never had before ah, I wonder if we can have a prayer meeting like we've never had I wonder if there can be a fervency in God's people like we've never had before. I wonder if we can call out to God like we've never called out to God before. I wonder if we can entertain his spirit like we have never entertained his spirit before. I wonder if you can desperately say, God, touch me like I've never been touched before. Move in me like I've never felt you before. Now that's about the level of prayer we prayed last week. Come on, a fervency. Let a sound rise up in this place. Don't worry about your neighbor. If we all let a sound rise in unity, you won't even be able to hear the person next to you. God, 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 we want to go beyond where we are right now. We need to go beyond where we are right now. The call is great. There are too many lost souls. There are too many unpossessed places. Oh, we want to go beyond. We want to go beyond. We're going to go beyond. We're going to go beyond. How many times have we seen it happen just like this? We come to a service just like this and it's glorious. We ascend in worship. We experience through praise and prayer this familiar high ground. And we say, here we are again, God. Thank you for your presence, God. Thank you for this place, God. Thank you that you're in this place, God. Oh, but there's more than this place. We can't allow there to be any familiar high ground. We have to press. We have to rise. We have to stretch. We have to reach. We have to go beyond individually and corporately we have to go beyond we have to go beyond we cannot be satisfied with familiar high ground so I need somebody somewhere to reach a little further I need some intercessors to reach a little further tonight there's a breaking out about to happen there is a breaking out about to happen come on pray 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 Pray, pray, pray. The devil is fleeing out of this place. Pray. Sickness is fleeing out of this place. I break witchcraft. I break every curse. Unbelief is leaving. Doubt is leaving. Complacency is leaving. Dead, cold religion is leaving. There's a fire. There's a passion. There's a burning that's entering in. Come on, let's go a little higher. Let's go a little higher. Let that passion burn. Come on, let that passion burn in your belly. Let that fire stir up on the inside of you. Stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. Wave after wave after wave after wave. Come on, stir it up, stir it up. There's another wave about to hit this place. There's another wave about to hit this tabernacle. Cry out, cry out, cry out. Say, I want to go beyond. I have to go beyond. I have to press into the more that God has for me. I'm not settling back here. I'm not staying back here. I'm entering into another realm of God. I'm entering into another level of God. 
door's wide open. 5784, the door's wide open. You think God can't take care of every need you have? The door is wide open. You think God can't pay every bill you owe? The door is wide open. You think God can't heal your body? The door is wide open. You think God can't set you free? The door is wide open. You think God can reach into the heart of your lost loved ones? The door is wide open. It's wide open. It's wide open. God hasn't run out of blessings. He's not bankrupt. There's another wave of revival. We haven't experienced all God has for us. You haven't experienced all God has for you. Many of you, the devil has made you think that you are limited. And under the sound of my voice in God, with the authority of Jesus Christ and with the anointing that comes from another world, I need you to know there is no limit in him. There is no limit in him. All he needs is an empty vessel. All he needs is an empty vessel. All he needs is an empty vessel to pour out his oil in, to pour out. some Caleb's, some Joshua's, ah, some Abraham's, some Mary's, some people willing to go beyond, willing to go beyond. I want to go beyond all I've ever known in God. There's so much more of him. There's so much more of him. There's so much more of him. about some blood-bought believers leaving this service saying I'm not settling with familiar high ground ever again I'm not letting off of my pursuit ever again I'm going beyond the highest place I've ever gone do you want to go beyond do you want to go beyond where you are right now do you want to go beyond everything you've experienced in God right now? Come on. One, two, three. Come to these altars. You want to go beyond? Take a step of faith. You want to go beyond? Take a step of faith and encounter a living God. Take a step of faith. Everything changes at the altar. This is where we're changed. You want to go beyond? 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 Up a 
church in a people, God, in unity that will go beyond everything that we are comfortable with. Unlock doors, God. Unlock doors, God. Unlock doors, God. We kick the door down. We kick the closed door down in the name of Jesus. I declare authority. I declare dominion. I declare fire. I declare a fresh oil in God. represent something because your generation is burning your generation is burning and us big people we need to burn brighter than ever before to create a path to pioneer the way to lead the way so that you have something to follow and so now in the name of Jesus I pray ah, and Elijah Elisha anointing to come upon us oh that we don't want you to just do what we do we want you to do more we want you to do more we want you to go further we want you to go beyond Thank you for watching today's live stream service. To ensure that you do not miss any other message, head to our YouTube channel and hit subscribe. And to stay updated on all events happening here at City Reach Church, you can follow us on all of our social media platforms, or you can visit us at cr.city events to receive any information on upcoming events that you need. And if you would love to partner with us to reach LA and to reach the world, you can give at cr.city give or text any dollar amount to the number 84321. Thank you again for joining us, and we cannot wait to see you for our next service.